I'm going to be going over how to make a vintage type logo, just like what you see right here. And I'm going to move through this fairly quickly. So if at any time you have any questions, feel free to hop in the comment section and ask there. And also stop the video or pause it if it feels like I'm going a bit too quickly. I'm using two different fonts here, and both the fonts are listed in the description. So go check that out if you want to pick these up. They're totally free. This one is Great Vibes Regular, and this one is Biba's New. So I'm going to start with the Biba's new font that just says vintage. Feel free to type whatever you want. Although if the word you type is less than three letters long, it might look a bit funky with the way that I'm going to do this. And also, you're going to want to have your line window open, your appearance window open, as well as the stroke window. And to open all these up, you can go to the window and then make sure you check align, appearance, and stroke. But I'm just going to jump right in here. Once you have the font Biba's new selected and you have the word typed out and sized relative to what you want it to be, but this is Illustrator so you can resize things as much as you want when you're done. We're just going to select that using the selection tool and then go to Effect, Warp, and I'm going to pick Arc. And I'm just going to try to match this somewhat closely. I'm not going to be too crazy about making it exact, but just to get this basic look. And we're going to adjust this as we go along too. And I'll show you how to do that really easily as we get going. I'm just going to hit OK here. And next I'm going to create this banner right down here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit using Control Plus, or if you're on a Mac, use Command Plus. I'm going to select the Rectangle tool, which is M as your default keyboard shortcut. I'm just going to try to make it somewhat relative to the width of this word right here, these two bottom points. I'm not going to be too crazy about making it exactly like this one. You can take your time to size it exactly how you think it will look best, but I'm going to arrange this and change it a bit as we go along. And now with the selection tool still selected here, I'm going to hold down the Alt button, or if you're on a Mac, the Option button, and just click this and drag it down a little bit. And holding the Alt or Option button just duplicates whatever that is. And I'm just going to drag this here to be a bit more of a square shape. Then I'm going to zoom in using Control Plus, or if you're on a Mac, Command Plus, and select this item. And as you can see, it brings up guides for the exact middle points of each of these. I'm not going to be too crazy about making this exactly in the center, but just hover your mouse over this middle one right here and try to get it somewhat close to the middle of that. And then hit the plus or add sign on your keyboard. And that'll bring up your pen add a point tool and then just click on it. And that's going to add a point right in the middle for you. Alternatively, you can just go to your pen tool here and select the add anchor point tool. Once you have that done, we're going to select the white arrow or the direct selection tool. And I'm just going to click off the shape and then highlight this middle point right here and kind of drag it a little bit this direction. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And with the selection tool, which is a V shortcut by default, just highlight this new shape we just made and hold alt. And then while holding shift, drag it to the right. Holding shift, just make sure it stays on this horizontal plane. It doesn't go up and down at all. And then select it and then right click. Or if you're on a one button mouse or a pen tablet, control click and go to transform, reflect. And we're going to want to select vertical, which should be right in the middle here. And then just hit OK. So now we have these two things selected and ready to go. I'm just going to select them both here. Zoom in a little bit and I'm going to arrange this middle point right here, roughly to the bottom left corner of this. So you can see this little red X in the middle of this shape that I'm going to line to this corner. And I'm just going to get it pretty close there and hit it. And I'm just going to do the same for this. And I'm just going to hold shift while I'm dragging it right, which will keep it exactly on this horizontal plane and line up that X over that corner. Uh, I'm not going to be too crazy about making this perfect. It doesn't really matter. It'll still look good. I'm just going to make sure that both of these are in the back. So I'm going to use the selection tool, select them both and then right click or control click and then arrange, send to back. And I'm going to select this entire banner right here. And I'm just going to hit these two arrows that look like a swap button. You can also hit Shift X on your keyboard to do this, just to switch this to a stroke instead of a fill. It helps me work a little bit. It doesn't make a huge difference if you don't do it that way. And now I'm going to drag this vintage type down. And in the appearance window, and remember that's under window, and appearance at the top here. You can see that there's a warp arc applied and at any point in time you can either click to toggle the visibility on and off or just straight up delete it by selecting this and then hitting the garbage can button right here. And I'm just going to delete this style since I don't want it applied at all. And I'm going to hold alt or option and then shift and just scale it down and that makes sure everything is both proportional and it's scaling down from the center instead of one of the sides. I'm just going to change what this says to type logo to match the one I've made previously. I'm just going to bring it here towards the middle of this and size it down a little bit. This looks pretty darn close. I'm just going to go with it. It looks good enough. You can also at any point in time just select your type here as well as the rectangular box it's in. Make sure you don't select any additional type. And then go to the align and hit horizontal align center. 
which will make sure your type is somewhat close to the middle here. You might have to adjust these two corner boxes a little bit if you do that, but it shouldn't be a big deal. And I've already got this shape here that has the colors I used right here. And just as a point of reference here, I have a three point stroke of a dark blue and then the fill is kind of this light blue here. So I can go on ahead and select everything but this type in the middle here and then just hit I, which is the eyedropper shortcut and select this. And as you can see that went over the type. So I'm just gonna right click this, arrange, send to back. I'm gonna go on ahead as well and select this type logo text and go over here to the fill and change it to white. We're getting pretty close to this. The last thing is just these two little lines connecting this to this right here. So I'm gonna go over the toolbar and select the line segment tool. And then I'm gonna to wanna make sure that I have the actual stroke to be the same as this right here in this box. So I'm just gonna hit I for the eyedropper quick and select it. And I'm gonna have the fill in front here and I'm gonna hit none which is this white box with a red arrow going through it, and then just click on the stroke here so that's in front. And once again, I'm gonna go up here to my line segment tool and select it. I'm gonna zoom in using Control plus or Command plus, and just try to get it relatively close. I'm gonna draw from this corner here down through this one. As you can see, this is a little bit off. I'm just gonna go to the white arrow selection tool or the direct select tool, which is A as a keyboard shortcut by default, and just move this point right here a little bit so it looks a tiny bit better. I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time getting this absolutely perfect, but this will be close enough for what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna hit V for the selection tool, and I'm gonna select this new line we just made and hold Alt and start dragging it this way. And as I'm dragging it this way, I'm gonna hold Shift so it's on this horizontal plane. I'm gonna right click or control click and go to transform reflect vertical. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm gonna start dragging it and then hold shift. So once again, it's perfectly on this horizontal plane and line up so it fits pretty nicely right here. Maybe just move it a tiny bit more. That should be good enough. And I'm gonna zoom out using control minus or command minus on a Mac. Now with your selection tool selected, select this entire thing. And if you're on a PC, hit control G or if you're on a Mac, hit command G. And that's gonna group this entire ribbon banner right here. And we're grouping it so that we can apply an effect to the entire thing. And that'll keep everything looking nice and consistent as we apply this effect. So we're gonna to go to Effect, Warp, and then Arc. And just hit this Preview button in the bottom left-hand corner here so we can kind of try to match this up pretty close. I'm just gonna adjust the bend a little bit. I'm trying to get the top of this arc here to match that of our type. We're definitely gonna to have to adjust this because you can see this banner is a bit too long. So I'm just gonna hit okay. I'm gonna hold alt and then shift and kind of size this down a little bit while moving it around. And this is where your judgment is really gonna to have to come in. I'm gonna to try to keep these edges kind of matching up the edges of the bottom of my type here. I'm just holding shift and kind of dragging this in a little bit. It might take a little bit of tinkering around to get it exactly right. I'm not gonna sweat the details a ton. I'm just gonna get it pretty close like this. And this is where your appearance window comes in super handy. As you can see, it has the warp arc that we just applied. And you can just go ahead and click that and then hit preview once again and you're right into editing this effect that you just applied. So I'm gonna get it a little bit closer to matching this type here and hit okay. I can see this needs to be increased just a little bit here. Increase this just a tiny little bit. And I'd say this is almost good enough. I'll just keep on going as not to take too long. But as you can tell, we're pretty close. And I also want this type here to match the type that we have right here. So once again, I'm just gonna hit I for eyedropper and select this little box, the swatch box I previously made. And as you can see my settings right here under stroke, you just wanna make sure you have a stroke that is a consistent line weight with what you're looking at here, or you can make it however big you want, it's up to you. Just make sure you double click the stroke here and apply it to whatever color you want, and then change the weight to be however thick or thin you think it needs, or don't use a stroke at all if you don't want that there. And also just as a quick stylistic difference that you can make, if you don't want warp arc, you can also do warp arch, which keeps both of these sides going much more vertical instead of kind of sprawling outwards. You can see that difference really quick here. I'm just gonna zoom in, you can see. So here's arc, you can tell these sides kind of go at an angle, or if you pick arch and then hit preview, the sides go much more straight vertically instead of kind of sprawling out at an angle to the side. I personally prefer arc a little bit, but that's totally up to you to make that call. Now we're almost done here. I'm just gonna select the script type that I already have typed out. And as you can see, the font is great vibes regular. Once again, that's right in the description. I'm just gonna bring it down here to the top of this. I'm gonna change it to the blue that I have already made here. So whatever color you're using and wanna make it, just apply it to it. And I don't have any kind of stroke applied to this. And with this script type selected, I'm gonna to go to Effect, Warp, and then Arc again. And I'm gonna hit Preview and just try to get it pretty close to what I see here so that it matches the arc of the top of our text. Uh, it looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna reduce it a little bit and then move it down just a tad. 
this is looking pretty close. I think it's good enough to go. And now just to write the 2014 down here, I'm going to once again have the selection tool selected. Hold Alt and just drag this down here. I'm going to go over to Appearance and just select this Warp Arc. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that since I don't want any kind of effect. And you can see the effect is now gone. I'm just going to double click this to bring up the Type tool and just select it all and type out 2014 really quickly here. And I'm going to get this roughly centered looks pretty good and there you have it this is all done and ready to go and as something that you might find pretty useful I'm just gonna duplicate this entire thing to edit your banner if you were to go in here and ungroup this for example if you wanted to edit a specific item you would see that it totally loses the effect we applied so to make that not happen you can just select this group of the banner and then go to object expand appearance and instantly that applies all the effects that you've made and you can go ahead and ungroup it and change individual items or move stuff around and the effect will remain applied. So as you can see simple type logos like this are really easy to make. They don't take a ton of time and you can really impart a lot of style with them as you kind of play around and start messing around with the settings to get them to look exactly how you want. I do hope this video was helpful and if it was please like and favorite. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. I try to put out new content every week for you to watch. So thanks so much for watching.